Good morning, everybody. Ted Haggard here from St. James Church in Colorado Springs. Actually, we are now the, the uh, storehouse, which is the storehouse at Seton Place, which is the house church ministry of St. James Church. And so it's awesome. If you want to check it out, you can go to the storehouse.homes. That's T H E S T O R E H O U S E dot H O M E S. And because we're a house church, that's the homes part. And the storehouse is what we call ourselves. And uh, for those of you that come to the storehouse, you can write your checks now to the storehouse or the storehouse at Seton Place or St. James Church. And for those of you that support our uh, ministry, we sure do appreciate that. We thank you for that. And you can give at either of those websites, either St. James Church, and you have to write out the word saint, or the storehouse.homes. Both of those websites work. And um, and we so appreciate your participation. We just think you're awesome. And of course, that enables us to do more and more and more. Well, this morning, we're in Mark, the eighth chapter, beginning with verse 22. And this is a wonderful story about Jesus healing a blind man. Now, of course, you know, during that day, they did not have ophthalmologists or optometrists. They didn't understand bacteria and um, uh, anything like that. And so uh, for a person to be blind was just the scourge of, of life. And this could be caused just by inflammation of the eye and you rub your eye and because of poor eye hygiene, then the eye would get a little bit infected and in that infection would grow and develop. And it was common during that day to see matted, just matter around somebody's eye where they wouldn't have needed to be blind if they understood hygiene, but there would be matter around it and flies and gnats and things like that. Oh man, it was terrible. And very often, Often when people would go blind, people would call them um, cursed or or it was because they sin. And of course, all sin. And so they could always accuse somebody. It was because of their sin. And and it would be just horrible. And they would end up on the streets, sometimes starving to death and other times just begging. Simple allergies could just do it in that day. So those of you that have allergies and you get watery eyes, if you would have been born during that day, you could have ended up being the blind guy. And so anyway, um, oh, and in the Middle East, the sun hits the Middle East, unlike it hits the United States, where we are geographically. And so sometimes just the glare of the sun would would temporarily blind somebody and then they would do something and they would end up uh, getting a bacteria or a virus in their eye or whatever. And oh, my gosh, it was just horrible, horrible uh, living. So anyway, this story, beginning with verse 22, is it about is about a person who was who was blind, who was in trouble. He was in town. There was all this activity around him, couldn't see where he was, and Jesus sees him. Here in verse 22, it says, When they arrived in Bethsaida, some people brought a blind man to Jesus, and they begged him to touch the man and heal him. Now, I want you to notice here that this man had advocates. Now, I want you to realize, I think we have plenty of accountability. I think we need more advocacy. Many of you say very often, I want to be like Jesus, or if I could just be more like Jesus. Well, what's Jesus doing right now? He's seated at the right hand of the Father, making intercession for you. It's the most wonderful thing. So he is your advocate. He is your uh, advocate to the Father, and he is giving the best possible argument for you because he loves you so much. And he's not telling all the negative things or he's not even balancing his argument. He is giving the best possible argument for you to the father. He is your advocate. And so very often I find myself thinking about that and thinking, I want to be the advocate for people. Like if there's some kid trying to go to college or if there is somebody in trouble trying to get a car, 
or if there is somebody in a situation where they need advocacy to say something positive, to use a relationship to help somebody else. And that's what Jesus does. Jesus is in a perfect relationship with the Father, so he's your advocate. All right. Jesus is in a perfect relationship with the Holy Spirit. So he sent the Holy Spirit into you. And now the Holy Spirit makes intercession through you in the perfect will of God. And so God becomes your advocate. And here's what happens. Even with other people, God becomes your advocate. He'll defend you when you're wrong. He'll defend you when you need protection. He'll defend you when somebody wants to take advantage of you. He is the one that will set those grievances right. My wife and I went through a horrible, horrible uh, hurt in 2006, and it was our great, great darkness, our time of, of real struggle. And we lost all of our financial resources, and we went deeply into debt. And and we just were in a horrible, horrible situation that happened when I was 50 and we never expected to be able to recover. But we knew that Jesus was our advocate. So we didn't or we didn't try to explain all the details or correct the things that were out there or anything like that. We just kept doing what we'd always do. We had prayed. We would read our Bibles and we would just do the best job that day that we could. And we weren't perfect. We, uh, uh, sorry, she might have been perfect, but I wasn't perfect. All right. So here we were in this situation and we would just do the best we could do in our imperfections and our struggles. And now the years have passed and we ended up receiving some beautiful windfalls. And now we've got financial security. Now we've got a wonderful group of friends that we meet with as believers. We have the most wonderful life. Our children are just um, uh, so impressive. And we are so grateful for what God has done in our life. Now, don't get me wrong. All of our children aren't perfect. Um, uh, they go through their normal struggles. They go through their normal stages. So do we. And, and we know that God is for us, just like God is for you. We know that God is our advocate. And here we have this blind man who had some advocates who brought a blind man to Jesus. He didn't scorn the blind man. So you may be blind in that you're so full of grief or so you're so full of hatred towards somebody that's done something horrible to you or a family member or a friend. You may be so bitter about some things that are going on politically or something that's gone on at work, but you need to know Jesus is your advocate and you need to turn that over to him and get a smile back on your face and let the Holy Spirit uplift you and, and know that God is your advocate and know that you have advocates too and know that you can become an advocate for others. All right. So these people brought the blind man to Jesus. That's verse one. Then in verse uh, or, or that's verse 22, the first verse we're looking at. And then in verse 23, it says Jesus took the blind man by the hand. OK, notice that he leads him by the hand. All right. That's comfort. That's assurance. Now, in our culture, if a man holds the hand of another man, that would be questionable. But not in that culture. For those of you that have been to India or anywhere in that part of the Middle East, you see people holding hands regularly just as they're walking along. But it is amongst friends. It is amongst people that are um, that have a, a, a warm relationship with one another. All right. But it doesn't mean intimacy or romance. All right. So he took him by the hand and led him out of the village. Isn't that interesting? All right. For those of you that know what the villages, what villages are like in the Middle East, they're hustle and bustle. There's activity. There's uh, somebody playing music. There's vendors hawking their goods. There's all this activity going on. And Jesus leads him out of the village to a place where there's peace. All right. Now, notice when you're in a village. There's concrete, there's wood, there's stone, there's all the hustle and bustle of the city. 
this man was just getting ready to go from blindness to be able to see. If he would have been healed in the hustle and bustle of the city, there would have been an overflowing amount of of information and, and stimulation going on there. So Jesus takes him to a place of peace. That's what he'll do with you. Jesus takes us to a place of peace. Used to be, this was 10 years ago, I would wake up in the night with cold sweats, worrying about this or worrying about that. I would get up and go out into our living room and pray just a little bit. And as I would pray, God would give me peace. And then I would go back to bed and sleep just like I normally do. My wife will do that too. If she gets worried about this or that, she'll slip out of bed. She'll go out into the living room. She'll pray just a little bit. And Jesus always brings us to a place of peace. And Jesus will do that for you. Now, I'm not saying he always will take you to a place of peace when he asks you to do something that requires obedience. Sometimes that'll test you right to the core. But when you walk with Christ and walk in peace and walk in his love, then you will find yourself in a position where you have great peace and you're able to flow with him. That's what he did. Verse 23, and most pastors overlook this. Jesus took the blind man by the hand and led him out of the village. Then spitting on the man's eyes, he laid his hands on him and asked, can you see anything now? All right. Have any of you ever cut your finger or poked your hand or anything like that? You know, the first thing you do when a person cuts their finger is they go, they put it right in their mouth. And because we all have a, um, I don't know if it's sublim subliminal or it's just intuitive, but we all know that, that we can, that there's some healing in it. And so, so people always talk about the, the Jesus spitting on the man's eyes and how uncouth that is and how terrible it is. Well, really, we kind of think of that as a healing mechanism. And, uh, and so here, Jesus spitting on the man's eyes, laid his hands on him and said, can you see now? And the man looked around. Yes, he said, I can see people, but I can't see them very clearly. They look like trees walking around. Now, this is very interesting because we all know God has the ability to heal us completely, but he very seldom does. Most of the time, we gradually come into a revelation or we gradually come into a healing or he gradually fixes a relationship or he gradually heals us with one of our sons or daughters. Or he gradually walks us along a path. And when I read this, I just thought I would say to you today, be okay with where you are. Focus on the good things in your life. Don't be discouraged with the things that are still needing to be worked on. Don't focus on your failures. Don't focus on your weaknesses. But instead, thank God for your strengths. Thank God for where you've come to. Thank God for the improvements that have been in your life. For the way God has protected you, focus on the miracles that you've received. Don't focus on the miracles that you hope to receive and didn't receive. Because you see, so many people will focus on what they can't see instead of the fact that they couldn't see at all. And now they can see some. And so you've come a long way in the Lord. You're so much stronger in the Lord than you used to be. You're so much more faithful in the Lord than you used to be. You're so much more, you've got so much more integrity and more strength. Your children are moving along in a beautiful, beautiful way. Don't give up. Focus on the positive. Be strong. Be healthy. Because now you can see a little. And in the future, you'll see even more. In verse 25, it says, it says, then Jesus placed on the man's, uh, his hands on the man's eyes again. And his eyes were open. Doesn't that happen to you and me? We grow from glory to glory to glory. We grow from one stage at a time to the next stage to the next stage. And sometimes we're like every little kid, every little kid, six-year-old, he wants to be a fireman or a policeman or little girl. She wants to be whatever she wants to be, which is possible now. All right. But they need to be seven-year-olds. Then they need to be eight-year-olds. Then they need to be nine-year-olds. 
and 10 year olds and 11 year olds and 12 year olds. They've got to go through those stages to get to be a 25 year old. It's the same with you and me. His sight was completely restored. That's coming in our day. And he could see everything clearly. Jesus sent him away saying, don't go back into the village on your way home. Because he didn't want all that confusion around this wonderful man. Well, that's the story of us. Jesus loves us. He loves you. And uh, he wants every one of us to be able to grow and grow and grow just like that. Hey, that's enough for this week. Have a wonderful, wonderful week. God bless you.